Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the GE dryer heat detector. It's going to be a very easy repair and it'll only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new heat detector. The heat detector is mounted down by the dryer igniter and it senses when the igniter is on. The main reason to be changing it out is if it's failed and you're not getting any heat. In order to get to the part, we have to take the dryer apart. First thing we're going to do is use our Torque 20 driver and take the four screws out across the top of the console. Once you have the screws out, we're going to lift the console up and disengage the three tabs that lock into the top panel and then you can just set the console on the back of the dryer. Then we can open up the dryer door and use our Phillips screwdriver to remove the two screws that hold the front panel to the top. Once you have both screws out, you can close the dryer door. To take the top off, we're going to lift it up and pull it off the dryer. Once you have it off, you can set it aside. With the top out of the way, we can remove these two screws. There's one on each side. It holds the front panel to the cabinet. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Once you have the screws out, you want to make sure you hold on to the front panel. We're going to take it off in a minute, but you don't want it to fall off. To get the front panel off, we're going to carefully lean it forward so we can disconnect the door switch wiring harness. Once you have it down far enough, we have to reach down and move this shield. We're going to pull this tab out from the cabinet and then swing it out of the way so we have access to the wires. There's actually two wires on the switch that we have to take off and we have to disconnect this union. All you have to do is unplug it and then we can take the wires off the door switch. First one we're going to take off is the yellow with the red stripe. That's going to go on the top. If they're on there tight, you can use a small flathead screwdriver to pop them off. And then we had the white one, which went to the bottom one. Once you have those two disconnected, we can let go of the shield and then we can lift the door off the mounting tabs. In order to change the heat detector, all you have to do is reach in through this access opening and reach back there and take the wires and the screw off. It's pretty easy to do that way. In order to show it to you, we're going to have to take the drum out. We're going to show you how to do that too if you can't reach in there. We're going to take these two screws out and then remove the drum. With the screws out of the way, we can reach in and take the belt off the pulleys. In order to get the belt off the pulleys, we're going to reach in between the drum and this bulkhead. You may have to lift it up a little bit to make some room. We're going to reach back and grab the idler pulley and you have to pull it down towards the bottom of the dryer and that'll make some slack in the belt so you can get it off the pulleys. Now that we have the belt off the pulleys, we can use it to lift it out of the dryer. You need to guide it out of these cutouts on the cabinet. Once you have it out, you can set it aside. In order to get the heat detector off, we have to reach in with a small flathead screwdriver and take the wires off. There's three wires, but there's only two that actually are on the heat detector. We're going to use a small flathead screwdriver to help break them free because they're kind of tight. You want to remember that the purple one is on the left and the double white one is on the right. Once you have the wires disconnected, we can reach in with the Phillips screwdriver and remove the screw that holds the heat detector to the burner tube. Once you have the screw loose, you can lift it out and then we're going to grab the heat detector and lift the tab off the burner tube and pull it out of the dryer.
Here's the old heat detector next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new heat detector in, we're going to put it in through the access panel. And we're going to put the tab down in the opening of the burner tube. Once you have the tab in, then we can grab the screw and put it in. To put the screw in, we're going to start it just by hand to get it into the hole. And then we can tighten it down with the screwdriver. Now that we have the new heat detector mounted, we can reattach the wires. To reattach the wires, we're going to put the double white one on the right and the purple one on the left. You want to make sure you push them all the way on so you get a good connection. Once you have the wires reconnected, we can put the dryer back together. Now we can put the drum back in the dryer. You want to make sure that the shaft on the center of the drum goes into the opening. We're going to use the belt to lift it up and guide it back through the cutouts. Once you have it in place, you can let the belt down and you want to make sure the ribs are against the drum. Then we can go down and put the belt around the pulleys. In order to put the belt back through the pulleys, we're going to do the same as before and reach inside and push the idler pulley down towards the bottom of the machine. Once you have the belt rotted through, you can pull your arms out. We can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the two screws in that hold the support bulkhead to the cabinet. Now we can put the front of the dryer on. To put the front panel on, we're going to line it up and set it onto the mounting brackets. There's one on each side. Once you have it on there, we're going to lift it up. Once you have the front panel lifted up a little bit, we're going to swing this cover out of the way, just like when we took it out. And we're going to attach the white wire to the back post. And the yellow with the reddish stripe on the top one. And then we're going to grab the black one that snaps together and push them together so we get a good connection. Once you have them all reconnected, we're going to lift the cover back over and lock the locking tab into the side. And then we can lift up the front panel and put it up the rest of the way. Once you have the front panel up almost all the way, we're going to have to lift up the drum so it rides on the glides. Once you have the front panel up, then we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in from the back. With the front panel secured, we can put the top on the dryer. To put the top on, you want to make sure that this tab right here goes underneath the control panel bracket here on each side. And then when you lower it down, this tab right here is going to go into this opening. Once you have the top on and in place, we can open up the door and put the screws in to hold it in place. Once you have the screws tightened down, we can close the dryer door. Next, we can lower the console back in place, and you want to make sure that these three tabs go into the opening on the top. Once you have it set down, you can push it back into place, and we can use our Torque 20 driver to put the screws in. Now that we have the dryer put back together, we can plug it back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair, brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.